Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm going to be continuing on with the Bondathon, and I will be talking about Spectre, which is the finally the return of the name Spectre and Blofeld and all that. I just wish that it was in a better movie. I am not a big fan of this movie. Uh, Blofeld, Spectre, that was kind of underwhelming, in my opinion. Not really a fan of the story. I do like the action sequences, though. I am a fan of the action sequences, and I think Daniel Craig does a good job. And you do have Monica Bellucci as a Bond girl. The oldest Bond girl, actually, at this point. But it's Monica Bellucci. That woman gets better looking with age, at least in my opinion. But anyway, um, we will talk all about that in the course of this review. But before I go any further, if anybody would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be uh, just a movie review. It could be a TV series or a cartoon or a comic book or a video game, music, random uh, thoughts and discussions and rants and commentaries and all that good stuff, anything in between. Um, again, if that's something that you would like to do, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. Uh, again, I know I keep saying it, but I might be able to squeeze one or two in before the month is out. But as soon as December 1st hits, nothing but paid requests. So if you have sent it in more recently, or again, you plan on sending one in, they will be coming pretty soon here, and I'm going to be knocking them out pretty quickly. So keep your eyes open. Uh, they will be coming pretty, pretty heavy in the first part of December. But yes. And for those that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, it means that you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you want to see me try out some different things. And it does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos. So it's a win-win for everybody. But yes, yeah, Spectre. So I, I might as well get that part out of the way first. So as you guys know, watching these reviews, and I'm sure a lot of you know what happened, the whole Spectre thing goes all the way back to Thunderball. Thunderball was written by Ian Fleming, Kevin McClory, and Jack Whittingham. That was going to be the first James Bond movie. The deal fell through. It ended up becoming a book. Kevin McClory sued Ian Fleming. They went to court. They settled. He got a bunch of money, and then they were able to make Thunderball. Kevin McClory got his name on it. Everything was fine. One of the perks that he got was after a period of 10 years, he was able to make his own version of Thunderball. He tried and tried. A lot of times he got sued, and then it was back and forth. Then he got mad because the people that controlled James Bond wanted to include Spectre and specifically Blofeld in The Spy Who Loved Me. He said no. That's why we stopped seeing Spectre and Blofeld by name and everything in a Bond film. Never Say Never Again came out, had that in there throughout the rest of the 80s and the 90s and until Kevin McClory died, he wanted to make another version. It was a lot of back and forth and all that stuff. So, after Skyfall came out, the family of Kevin McClory and the people that control James Bond came to an agreement, they came to terms, and they bought the rights to Spectre and Blofeld. And that's why, number one, they called the movie Spectre, and number two, that's why they brought back the character and then connected it to Quantum of Solace, because in Quantum of Solace, they, they again, they couldn't call it Spectre, so they called it Quantum, and then they rectified that in this movie, and then in the next movie, they continued with it. So there you have it. That's the long of the short of it. So after 50 plus years of going back and forth and suing each other and arguing and bitching and complaining and everything, they finally came to an agreement of, all right, let's just do the right thing. We'll pay you whatever, and we get all this stuff, and everybody goes home happy. And that's essentially what happened. 
So that leaves that out of the way. Now, Sam Mendez came back to direct this one, and I do think this movie is well directed, but it is a couple steps down from Skyfall. Skyfall, like I said, should have been the last James Bond movie, at least in my opinion. It was the 50th anniversary. It's a very solid, very well done movie. They kind of hit the peak, at least in my opinion, and then they kind of went downhill because this is several steps down. And the next movie, No Time to Die, which I saw prior to the recording of the Daniel Craig reviews, is a, a bunch of steps down. And we'll get to that in the next video. But it's like they kind of forgot what they were doing. <laughs> and they were like, all right, well, we'll do this. Now, the story is okay. So, as with the previous movie, there was a new M. They blew up MI6. This guy comes in. He wants to shut down MI6 and say they're outdated. And he wants to create this new organization. And Bond is doing his own thing. He starts to investigate some things, and he finds out that the leader of Spectre, who controlled the people that were in the previous movie and controlled kind of the outcome of everything to lead to this point, is Blofeld, who was played by Christoph, Christoph Waltz, who I love. I love Christoph Waltz. I thought he was good in this movie. He's definitely underused in the next film, I will say. And I enjoyed him and some of the other stuff he's been in. I like him as an actor. And I thought he was the good choice for Blofeld, to be honest. And Bond finds out that Blofeld wants to basically sell his service to the highest bidder and tap into all the other intelligence organizations out there so he can control what goes on with terrorist attacks and all that sort of thing. And you find out that the guy that is going to take over MI6 and all that is in cahoots with Blofeld. So they have to stop this guy before it's too late and activates this network that they're going to use that will control all of this and that. So it's kind of, I would say, a step down from the previous movie because now they learn at least in my opinion, they learn from Quantum of Solace because Quantum of Solace was going back to the older Bond stuff, which people bitched about for many years. And then when you get to the Daniel Craig stuff, you're like, oh, well, the Daniel Craig movies are so realistic and they don't have those goofy, I'm going to take over the world villains and all that. And then with Quantum of Solace, they realized that they kind of went back to what they established in Casino Royale and it worked, and then they went right back to it because we're back to the old system. We're back to the old territory where it's like, okay, cool. I am the rich, evil billionaire, and I want to take over the world, and this is how I'm going to do it. So again, you know, I think, at least in my opinion, the better Daniel Craig films are the more normal ones, like Casino Royale and Skyfall. All the other ones you went back to the older Bond motifs. But then all the people, now don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people out there that hate on Daniel Craig's movies. I'm not one of those people. I quite enjoy it. But as I said with Casino Royale, unfortunately, he's done more not so good Bond movies than good movies. The only two good ones was Casino Royale and Skyfall, in my opinion. The rest are kind of eh. To be honest, Quantum of Solace is definitely his worst film. Actually, scratch that. No Time to Die is definitely his worst film. And then I would say Quantum of Solace, and then I would say this one. Because, you know, the whole thing about Daniel Craig was, yeah, we're rebooting Bond, and we're going to do what Batman Begins did, and we're going to do this, and they're going to be more realistic and more grounded. And then they did that for one movie and then went back and then they did it for another movie and then they went back for the last two. So it just really irks me how a lot of people that think that Daniel Craig is the only good James Bond and Daniel Craig movies are the only good James Bond movies and they bitch and complain about, you know, particularly the Roger Moore films where, you know, it's all about world domination and the evil, mega maniacal billionaire. I actually said that word right this time. 
It's a tongue twister, I know. They bitch about those, but the majority of the Daniel Craig films have that as a plot line. So it's just hypocrisy at its finest, to be honest. But the story is really weak. Now, I get it. They got back the rights to Spectre. They got the Blofeld back. I get why they wanted to include that. I appreciate that. But it was just more of the same. It was more of what we saw in the older films. And these movies want to separate and differentiate themselves from those. But they wanted a lot of, I think a lot of the time they really wanted to be those older Bond movies so bad. So they just tried to be like them in every way, shape, or form. So there you go. So the story is definitely the weakest thing of this movie. And it hurts it because, especially coming off of Skyfall, which I would say is one of the best Bond movies, you know, obviously you don't want to top yourself because, you know, whether it's movies or music or whatever, I think if you try to outdo the previous movie, or the previous record or whatever, that people don't like that. They just want something just as good because eventually you're going to get tired of eating the same thing. You, I mean, I love pizza, don't get me wrong, but I can't eat pizza every day. So that's, I think, a problem with a lot of sequels and everything is instead of just doing another story just as good as the previous, they try to outdo the previous and it doesn't work a lot of the times. It definitely does not work. So the story really hurts this movie because it was just a rehash of a lot of the older Bond films. And I hated the concept of how they made Blofeld and Bond like foster brothers. I thought that was really stupid. Very cheap. Very unoriginal. Why couldn't Blofeld just be the ultimate Bond villain like in a lot of the older ones? The ones that he was in? Like Diamonds Are Forever and you only live twice and all that. Why couldn't he just have been the ultimate, you know, the, the opposite of Bond? Excuse me. The guy that Bond couldn't get to. Instead of making them brothers. I thought that was kind of a dumb concept. And again, how many other movies, particularly sequels, do that once they get once they get to like the third and the fourth and so on movie? Friday the thirteenth did it. Scream did it, etc., etc., so on and so forth. It's it's cheap. I hate it. It's 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 the, in wrestling the cheap heat. It's the cheap heat. They do that because it's it's the lowest common denominator. Well, just make them siblings. Well, why? Just cause. Well, that's stupid, in my opinion. So that really hurts it for me too, personally. But I mean, I like I Daniel Craig does good. You know, he's working with what he has to work with. I love how they brought back Ray Fiennes and Naomi Harris and Ben Winslow and Miss Money Penny and Q, respectively. I like Christoph Waltz. Again, really good actor. And he was a good choice for Blofeld. But I just don't like how they wanted to make him and Bond brothers. It was cheap. It was unoriginal. It was lazy writing. Dave Bautista is in this movie. I know... He got a lot of praise for this role, but fuck Dave Bautista. I was never really a fan of him as a wrestler. I never really cared for him as a wrestler. He was just a generic big dude that had nothing special about him, in my opinion. As an actor, most of the movies that he is in suck, except Guardians of the Galaxy, because that, I think, was tailor-made for him. But every, pretty much every other movie that I've seen him in sucks. Um, Wrong Side of Town, where he was a villain against Rob Van Dam. Escape Plan 2 and 3. All Pretty much every other movie that Dave Bautista was in was garbage. And I cannot stand him as a, as a wrestler and as a person. He is a fucking idiot, in my opinion. And then more recently, he said this was the worst movie he worked on and the worst movie he ever was in and all this other shit. It's like, boo-hoo, give me a fucking break. But I cannot stand Dave Bautista. I don't care. And Blade, uh, Blade Runner 2049, he was okay in because he was only in a little bit of that movie. So it's not like he was in the entire film. Um, Monica Bellucci, the oldest Bond girl, like I said at the top of the video, that woman gets better looking for, with age. of course. 
everybody remembers her from The Matrix Reloaded. Uh, she was in Tears of the Sun with Bruce Willis, which came out the same year, I believe. Um, she was in Dracula. She was in the Francis Ford Coppola Dracula. She was one of Dracula's brides, which was cool. But absolutely breathtakingly beautiful woman. Of course, she was also in Shoot 'em Up. Um, I've always been a fan of hers. Uh, she's a good actress. I like her work, but just one of the most beautiful women of all time, in my personal opinion. Um, yeah, the fact that she's Italian helps out, but I just enjoyed her. I wish that she was the main Bond girl because the main Bond girl, what's her name? Uh, Leah Sado, which she comes back in the next one. I believe she's in the next one. Yeah. Um, she's in this one. She's the dude's daughter. And then Bond has to go get her. I mean, she's not bad looking. She's French. I won't hold it against her. But, you know, I, I just it's something about the Daniel Craig movies where the Bond girls are a little bit weaker than... You know, I don't know. I but you have to take into consideration the first three Bond movies didn't really have all the woke shit in it, and then once you get to this one, that's when it kind of started, and then obviously the next one. But it's not as woke as people think. So you can't really go into the whole thing. Oh well, the women are just your stereotypical women in these movies and all that bullshit. But whatever. But I don't know. It's just something like about the Daniel Craig movies. Skyfall, I mean, the, the one woman that helped him out and then she got killed off. I guess she was a Bond girl. Uh, Ava Green is one of the best. And then you have Monica Bellucci. But I wish Monica Bellucci was the main Bond girl instead of Leia Sadu or Leia Sadu or however you say her name. But she's all right. And then they, I mean, she's, she is nice to look at. She's pretty. But I don't know. It's just like you look at, the all the older Bond movies, the pre Daniel Craig ones, and most of the Bond girls in those movies were pretty spectacular. I don't know if they did that on purpose or they were just like feminazis unite or whatever. Power of no women, but I don't know. But it's just something about the Daniel Craig movies where the Bond girls are particularly weaker, except Casino Royale and Monica Bellucci in this movie. But yeah. But I do, you know, the action scenes, the beginning, I really enjoy. I do really enjoy the beginning of the Day of the Dead Festival. Very well done. The filming and the editing is top notch. I really enjoy that. The snow stuff was cool because it was like on Her Majesty's Secret Service and some of the other Bond movies. It had skiing scenes and such. But other than that, the action really wasn't that much to write home about. The ending where they got to stop the virus or the thing from activating and all that was kind of a little bit weaker. And then Bond not killing Blofeld, which sets up for the next movie. And then they barely used him in that movie. So it was kind of fucking pointless in my opinion. But other than the beginning, which I do think is the best part, the action scenes and the stuff in the snow, other than that, and the train. But other than that, nothing really special to write home about. Again, it's like they forgot they were doing a Bond film. And they just kind of wanted to throw the fact that they had Spectre and Blofeld back. And that was it. So yeah, this movie, you know, at the end of the day, this movie is a, is a couple of steps down from Skyfall. And the next movie is a bunch of steps down from Skyfall. But like I said, once you hit that peak, it's really hard to stay even close there. And it's like they kind of gave up with these last couple of Bond movies, at least in my opinion. And that's why they should have stopped at Skyfall. Just me. You could have had Bond ride into the sunset in his Aston Martin, and that could have been it. But that's too much to ask for. That is way too much to ask for, I guess, in my opinion. But I do, one thing before I, I sign off here, I do love how they brought back the white tuxedo that was originated by none other than Mr. Sean Connery. So that was fun to see again. But at the end of the day, you know, 
it's a this is a couple steps down from Skyfall. Skyfall again, I will say that till the crows come home. Should have been the last Bond movie. You didn't really need anything after that. There's good direction. There's some good action scenes, but it's like okay, enough is enough, and we definitely feel that with this film and particularly the next film, which we'll get into. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Spectre. And next up, the final James Bond movie that I will be reviewing. Hopefully the final James Bond movie. No time to die. So until then, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and I will talk to you soon. See you.